Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we will look at the statement of comprehensive income and the reclassification adjustment. This topic is covered in intermediate accounting. And generally speaking, this topic gives students some issues because the statements of comprehensive income is fairly new to the students and the reclassification adjustments require a prior knowledge. So basically two topics that are fairly new and they give students some headaches. Obviously these two topics are covered on the CPA exam, the FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This lecture will go under my intermediate accounting and I have hundreds of intermediate accounting lectures. Please, if you like my lectures, please like them. It doesn't cost you anything. Share them, put them in playlist. If they help you, it means they might help other people as well. Please connect with me on Instagram as well. On my website, you will find additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice, exercises. If you're studying for your CPA exam, 2000 plus CPA questions, plus many exercises that are considered quasi CPA simulation. So let's start to talk about the component of other comprehensive income and other comprehensive income. We learn in a prior chapter that we have one and two two step approach. The one step approach and the two step approach, basically the presentation, we can show comprehensive income in a combined statement of income and comprehensive income. So this is one statement or we can show comprehensive incomes in a separate statement starting with net income simply put let's take a look visually let's take a look at them and this is we're combining the two this is the income statement then we have the other comprehensive income then comprehensive income or we can have two separate statement this is the income statement separately then we have the comprehensive income statement starting with net income which is two this is one this is two and this is only one Okay, so those are the two approaches. Now, the best way to approach this, because this is a complete, complete, um, complete comprehensive income statement, the best way to approach this is to start from scratch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start from scratch, uh, building a balance sheet to get to the comprehensive income statement section. Then we we'll look at the reclassification adjustments because it does deal with comprehensive income. So understanding comprehensive income uh, statement before you get to the reclassification makes your life much, much easier. So to illustrate the concept, let's take a look at an example. Assume that on January 1st, Hinge Company, Hinge Company had cash and common stock only at their balance sheet. At, at that date, we had no asset, no other assets, liabilities or equity. So simply put, we are looking at a simple balance sheet. We have cash of 50,000 and we have common stock. That's it. Now what we did is we took the cash, we took the $50,000 cash and we bought investments. So after with the purchase, we no longer have cash. Now we have debt investments of 50,000 and nothing else. Pretty practically a simple balance sheet. This is, you know, on January 2nd, the following day. That's what we did. Okay. Now we have a debt investment on the books with a cost of $50,000. Mid-year, around mid-year, June 30th, we sold $20,000 of the available for sale securities for $22,000. So of that $50,000, you remember, we, we bought $50,000 worth of securities. We sold $20,000 of them, and we sold them for $22,000. What does that mean? It means we had a gain of $2,000. This is a realized gain. Remember, realized gain goes on the income statement, $2,000. So make a note of it. Also, because we have those debt securities, we received $3,000 in interest. Well, that's good. If we receive $3,000 of interest, that's interest income. That also goes on the income statement. So at the end of the year, if we, if we sold the 20,000, we must have 30,000 of debt investments. And this is what our portfolio would look like at, that, at the end of 2020. The cost is 30,000 of the securities. Now they have a value of 34,000. What does that mean? It means we have an unrealized gain of 4,000. That's unrealized versus, so let me highlight, and you should know what realized versus unrealized. Unrealized means it's a gain that's on the books that we have not sold it yet. Okay, 4,000. Now, we need to make an adjustment to reflect that net, uh, net unrealized gain of 4,000. Now we need to make an adjustment to reflect this $4,000 gain. We're going to debit fair value adjustment 4,000, credit unrealized holding gain or loss equity 4,000. If you are lost, stop. If you don't know what this is, we are adjusting our portfolio to market. Please, in the description, 
look at that prior video to learn how to do this because if you don't know how to adjust your portfolio from period to period this is period one okay and you're gonna be lost in this lecture so go ahead and look in the description and I will have a video explaining how to do so okay so let's take a look at what our financial statements would look like well we have an income statement and what goes on the income statement two things the interest revenue of 3000 and the realized gain of 2000 so our total income is 5000 for the period now we have statement of comprehensive income what goes on the statement of comprehensive income we'll starting with net income 5000 then we're going to add the 4000 of unrealized gain now you saw how this this whole income statement is put together and this whole statement of comprehensive income put together so we're going with the two-step approach this is one and this is two also if, if we want to be a little bit more technical let's take a look at the statements of stockholders equity and we're starting with the balances common stock nothing for retained earnings nothing for accumulated and equity was fifty thousand at the beginning we had net income of five thousand which will increase retained earnings then we had uh, the gain for, for, from the portfolio, other comprehensive income, and the ending balances will be 50,000 stock, 5,000 retained earning, 4,000 other accumulated other comprehensive income, and total of 59,000. Now let's take a look at the balance sheet when we started, which was clearly very simple. We only had cash and common stock, asset and common stock. Now at the end of the year, we have $25,000 in cash. We still have that investment of 34. Common stock 50, retained earning 5, and accumulated retain, retained earning 9. Now we all we know where all these numbers are coming from. This is, you know, just this is from the sale of stock plus the interest. Remember, we sold them for 22, and the interest was 3,000. This is 50,000 original cost. We sold the 20. The remaining was 30 and the remainder we added 4,000 of increase in value we have 34,000 retained earning 5,000 from the net income and the 4,000 from the adjustment of the portfolio so this is the accumulated other comprehensive income of 4,000 okay so I hopefully now after going through this simple but I believe powerful illustration we do understand where accumulated other comprehensive income where does it come from so it's this is a simple example now the next example I'm gonna work is multi-year so it's gonna show you from year to year what's gonna happen now we're gonna start this example okay here's what's gonna happen when the company sells securities during a year double counting of the realized loss or gain and in comprehensive income may occur what does that mean sometime at, not sometime at the end of the year you might have an unrealized gain on a security that sits on the balance sheet then you're gonna sell that security and when you sell that security let's assume you sold it at a gain now you have an unrealized gain on the balance sheet and again on the income statement what we have now is double counting so double counting result when a company report unrealized gain or loss and other comprehensive income in a prior period and report those gains and losses at part of income in the current period so it gets reported twice so what do we have to do we're gonna see what we have to do we have this three classification adjustment I'll show you how it works and this is basically what what it what what it what's this whole thing is about okay so starting with a portfolio of at the end of 2020 so this is a different example we have two securities Lehman bonds six percent bond and Woods company bond the reason I put a star here because I'm gonna be selling Lehman bonds so I just want I want you to make a note of it Lehman we paid 50,000 for them the fair value is 105 we have an unrealized holding gain of 25 Woods we bought them at 120 fair value is 135 we had unrealized gain of 15 total portfolio we have an unrealized gain of 40,000 this is year one there is no prior uh, pr prior balance in the fair value adjustment balance let's book this entry we debit fair value adjustment 40,000 credit unrealized holding gain or loss 40,000 again I'm gonna ask you to stop if you don't understand where this is coming from I'm not gonna explain it see in the description you need to learn how to adjust your portfolio to market Okay, so this this is the year one adjustment for the portfolio okay so let's take a look at the statement of comprehensive income let's assume this company open company we're gonna call it report net income of three hundred and fifty thousand let's build the statement of comprehensive income the three headings the period we're gonna start with net income 350 which is given to us plus other comprehensive income of forty thousand now you have to understand 
that on the balance sheet we're gonna have we're gonna have open company report on the balance sheet it's investment of two hundred and forty thousand which is the two hundred plus the fair value adjustment of forty okay so on the balance sheet let's take a look at this we're gonna have two hundred plus the forty which is two forty on the balance sheet the investment that's on the balance sheet now what needs to be done too we need to transfer unrealized holding gain equity to accumulated OCI. We need to go accumulated OCI. So OCI goes to accumulated OCI. So OCI here is, we have, it was a credit. So notice we credited. Notice here unrealized holding gain or loss equity was a credit. Now we need to debit it and transfer it to OCI. So simply put, it went from OCI which is unrealized holding gain or loss as an OCI account to accumulate it to a OCI. So we transfer the 40,000 to accumulated other comprehensive income. Simply put, if you want to see on a T account, first we debited fair value adjustment 40, credited unrealized holding gain or loss 40 to adjust the portfolio. Then what we did, we took this 40,000 to OCI. So we debited OCI and credited accumulated a OCI. So we transfer it to 40. Now this is, well, let's make the balance zero on the credit side. Okay. So this is basically what we did. We transfer it to 40,000. This is at the end of year one. Now, year two, August 10th, year two, which is 2021, year 2021, open company sells at Sleeman. Remember, I told you I'm going to sell Sleeman. That's why I made a note of it for 105, realizing a gain of 25,000. Okay, which is 105 minus 80 of the cost. So we debit cash 105, credit debt investment 80,000, credit the gain, which goes on the income statement of 25,000. Now. now remember, this gain too is sitting on AOCI. So technically, kind of we're counting, counting in a sense the gain twice. It's on two different places. You're going to see what's going to happen. Now let's look at the portfolio at the end of 2021. At the end of 2021, we only had woods left. We did not buy any new securities. The cost of the wood is 120. The fair value is 155. We have an unrealized holding gain or loss of 35. Now again, we have to make the appropriate adjustment. The prior balance was a gain of 40. Now the gain is 35, so we need to make an adjustment for 5,000. Again, if you don't know what, what you're doing here, this is when I say stop. So I need to reduce my unrealized holding gain or loss equity by 5, credit fair value adjustment by 5. Okay, so this is my 2021 adjustment. So this is, um, this is the statement of comprehensive income, assuming the company made 720,000 in net income. Then we're going to add, um, now we're going to subtract unrealized holding gain or loss because we had we had we had the 40,000 in gains now the gains went down to 35 so we have losses of 5,000 which is the this is reflected here minus 5,000 of other comprehensive income of 5,000 now remember this other comprehensive income will have be, will have to be transferred to accumulated other comprehensive income so this is OCI will have to be transferred into AOCI so let's do that so year two, what we did is we, cre we, we credited fair value adjustment. We credited fair value adjustment right here. And we debited, and we debited, uh, we debited unrealized holding gain or loss. What do we do next? We're going to transfer this 5,000. We're going to credit unrealized holding gain or loss, and we're going to debit accumulated OCI. So this transfer to OCI. Now, in AOCI, AOCI, we have 35,000. In fair value adjustment, we have 35,000. And we have a gain of 35,000. Okay, so this is the adjustment that I just did. I debited accumulated other comprehensive income and I credited unrealized holding in or loss. So I showed you this on the prior slide. Let's go back and see it. I'm going to highlight it in yellow because I showed you on the T account before I. So I transferred the 5,000 to AOCI, from OCI to AOCI. Now, at December 31st, let's take a look at what we have. At December 31st, here's what's happening. 
at December 31st, open company report on its balance sheet, debt investment of 155, because that's the one that's left, the cost of 120 plus fair value adjustment of 35, and accumulated other comprehensive income of 35, which is I showed you. So, and this is the entry to transfer. Now, what we need to do, we need to explain, we need to explain that 25,000 of the gain was removed from AOCI. So let me show you what really happened behind the scene. Although the journal entries did not show you, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. So on the notes of the financial statements, companies are required to take out the prior gain, the prior the the gain that was counted twice, and the gain that was counted twice is that is this gain twenty five thousand. So let's see what's going to happen now. So the gain on the income statement we don't touch, kind of we don't touch because it's it's closed and we moved on. So this is the balance at the beginning, A O C I. The beginning was 40 and the ending was 35, right? Let's take a look at it one more time. Please make a note of this account. The beginning was 40 when we transfer year one, then transfer year two, the ending was 35. But what really happened is this. So this is, I'm gonna show you exactly what really happened. What really happened is we added $20,000 of the current period, other comprehensive income. So we added OCI, 20,000, then we had to remove, we had to deduct, notice it's a minus 25 for the realized gain. So all in all, is we reduced it by five. But this 5,000 took into account, kind of took out the 25. So let me show you from a T account what happened really. Okay, so you have to go back and follow with me. Okay, we started with debited, um, debited fair value adjustment 40, Credited unrealized holding gain or loss 40. This is for year 2020. We had $40,000 in gains. Then the second thing we did is we transferred it. We debited unrealized holding gain or loss, and we took this amount to AOCI. Therefore, the balance was zero. The balance was zero. Then in year 2021, we booked a gain of 25000 when we sold Lehman, Lehman Bond. When we sold Lehman Bond, what should have happened is this. When we sold Lehman Bond, we needed to go back to this 40,000 right here, accumulated other comprehensive income, and back out of it 25,000 of the gain because this gain, this 25,000, is counted here, and now it's counted here. It's counted in two places. So what we needed to do, we needed to remove this 25,000. Therefore, what we do is we debit Accumulated other comprehensive income. We reduced accumulated other comprehensive other comprehensive income. The balance became 15. And we credit fair value adjustment. We credit fair value adjustment. Now the balance and fair value adjustment is 15. So the balance 15, the balance is 15. Then what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves when we get to the 2021 portfolio, 21 portfolio, it says we should have a gains of 35,000. Well, there we go. If we have in the fair value adjustment a current balance of 15 and we need the balance to be 20, what does that mean? It means we need to increase fair value adjustment by 25. So we, for every debit in the fair value adjustment, the corresponding credit is unrealized holding gain or loss. Now, if you are lost at this point, again, you have to see how we adjust the fair value adjust the fair value from the prior session. Therefore, we debited fair value adjustment, we credited unrealized holding gain or loss. Now. The balance is 35. This is what we needed to do. We need to have 35,000 of gain reflective in the portfolio, which we do. If it's a debit balance and fair value, remember, fair value, if we have a debit balance, it means we have a gain, and the gain is 35,000. So the fair value adjustment is correct. Now, we only have an AOCI 15,000. Once we close this 20,000, once we close it to OCI, we debit unrealized holding gain or loss and credit OCI, we are back to 35,000 to OCI, which it should match fair value. So those two should match 35 of gain, 35 of gain. So simply put, what we did is we removed the gain indirectly. So let me show you what basically what happened. If you look at it, notice if we take, here's the, um, Let me show you the $5,000 adjustment, what we did here, okay? If you really think of it, this negative 25, uh, credit 25, debit 25, 
net is credit five. You see that those two, I'm gonna highlight them in yellow. Those two entries, credit 25, debit 20, the net is five. The net is 5,000. Credit 20, debit 20, the net is five. Therefore, we credited this account five, we debited this account five. So this is the net. This is the net of every, this is everything, the net. But what we did earlier in this entry, I showed you the 5,000, but I showed it to you clearly. So the 5,000, you remember the net, notice that this is the net, and this is end up to be the net. But I wanted to show you the last, the last entry to show you how the 25,000 was taken out. Okay, so this, so this page here is just gonna show you that the 25,000 was taken out. It, it was taken out out of AOCI, so it's not double counted. So I just wanted to show you how it works, technically, technically, okay? In the next session, we would look at transfer between categories, between, you know, uh, available for sale versus trading versus held to maturity. As always, I would like to remind you to like my lectures if you like them. I strongly suggest you visit my website for additional resources, PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice. If you're studying for your CPA, you are investing, making a lifetime investment. Make it properly. It's worth it. Study hard. The counting is not easy. But if you spend the time, if you spend the effort, you will do fine. Good luck.